Hello, everyone. Today's demo, uh, our structure for today's demo, we'll start out with a sort of a guided tour of the NextDocs SharePoint user interface so that you can see how NextDocs works within the SharePoint framework. Next, we'll spend most of our time on walking through the creation and life cycle of a submission document, starting with creating uh, a draft document from a template and carrying all the way through to create a submission-ready PDF that can be dragged and dropped into a publishing tool. So most folks are already somewhat familiar with SharePoint. And SharePoint is, of course, a web-based collaboration platform. And the intention is to bring people and documents together to streamline processes and increase interaction. And that makes it different than your traditional document management systems. So in traditional document management, a lot of times, although uh, with the best of intentions, people meant for collaboration to take place, in fact, what often happened was there wasn't a lot of value add to the collaboration, and, it, and the system mostly ended up serving as a repository for final documents. But I think you'll see in the demonstration today that the SharePoint features that are part of our NextDoc systems and also the very uh, streamlined integration with other Microsoft tools like Microsoft Office and Outlook uh, really make for a nice collaboration platform where it actually encourages users to do their work within the NextDoc system and, and not outside of the system as occurred with a lot of legacy uh, platforms. I'll show you some of the integration points with Microsoft Office and, um, and Outlook today, and, and I think that you'll see that they're, they're really nice and they make it easy to work with the system. NextDoc uses building blocks from SharePoint to build our system. So uh, there's a lot of great features provided in SharePoint already. And we make use of those. Uh, and we build on top of SharePoint to add life science specific features. Uh, part of the reason SharePoint has been so successful is that it's such a, a, uh, a broad tool that, that really supports so many different uh, uh, needs for collaboration. But it's not specific to life sciences. And that's where NextDocs comes in to add um, some of what Eric described as the compliance platform features, for example, to make sure that the, our systems can be used in a biopharmaceutical or life sciences context in a compliant way without writing custom software. So that's how we round out SharePoint. And you'll also see that we don't really change the user interface very much for SharePoint. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is that our users tend to come in many times already familiar with SharePoint, and therefore it makes it very easy for them to use. Uh, another point is that Microsoft uh, spends millions of dollars on research and focus groups and on, on um, working to continually make the um, interface user friendly and to expand it into the future. And we obviously want to take advantage of that. So we really try to fit in fairly seamlessly with the existing uh, SharePoint framework. What you're seeing here today is our NextDocs regulatory solution on SharePoint 2010. And that was released about six months ago, so it's been on the market for a little while now. We also have solutions available on SharePoint 2007, but our demo today will focus on SharePoint 2010, since that's where we're seeing the most interest going forward. And you'll, you can see from looking at, uh, at our system here that, in fact, let me just move uh, to our main page here. In fact, what it looks like is more like a portal almost than a traditional document management system. So there's a lot of portal-like capa capabilities. There's access to uh, various rich content and collaboration tools, as well as document management. So if we look, for example, um, across the top, we see here four different links. And that's because my particular user is set up to work with four different SharePoint repositories for regulatory SOP quality and clinical. And today we'll focus on regulatory, but I can move seamlessly between those different systems. I don't have to keep re-entering and logging in. So that's, um, that's a uh, great feature. Down the right-hand side, you'll see some examples of custom links that have been added to the system for things that you commonly work with. Uh, those could be uh, things like the FDA pages and the European Medicines Agency. They could also be links to um, places within your company's intranet. And uh, so anything that was useful could be available right there in a, in a nice portal-like manner. In the middle, I see my to-do list. So these are tasks that I've been assigned. 
Uh, so you can see here I have an approval task and a review task queued up to be completed. And we'll see later on how those tasks look and how they're integrated with email notifications and so forth. I happen to have our submission planning calendar here that's showing me up um, events that will occur soon or have occurred recently as far as submissions. And right here, a very nice useful feature is a list of all the documents that I've been working with recently, either by um, documents I've created or documents that I've edited. So I don't have to go off and search to find those documents. They're right there at my fingertips. If we go down the left-hand side, we can see different content or libraries that are available to me as part of the regulatory system. So the first thing we see are, is the regulatory document library. And we'll actually be spending most of our time in this library later on. These are our source documents that are included in ECTD submissions, the documents whose life cycle takes place within this system. I also have a drop-off library. That could be a place that my um, partners or CROs dropped off documents that I then picked up for processing. I have a submission archive. So Eric mentioned that we can archive ECTDs and other, even other submissions, but the focus here is really on ECTDs today, into our submission archive. And if I click on that, you see a number of submissions. And I'm going to show you um, a nice feature of working with NextDocs and SharePoint as far as viewing ECTDs. So if I just click on, this is representing a drug product here, this DE089. Those of you who are familiar with ECTDs, with published ECTDs, know that each time you publish and submit to an agency, that you have a, a top-level folder that represents the ECTD sequence that you've submitted. And that's what you're seeing here, sequence zero. So within my sequence zero folder, I see um, this, this particular submission had module one and module five documents. And the other elements are all required technical parts of the ECTD. And in fact, this one called index is an XML document that serves as the table of contents for the ECTD. When I click on that, it asks me if I want to open it up, which I will do. And I see here a sort of lightweight ECTD viewer. And this is not going to replace a real ECTD viewer you would want to use to review a submission before you, you sent it to an agency. But it is a very useful feature in that you can actually work with and view the ECTD uh, within the, the um, SharePoint repository. So here, for example, if I click on the synopsis, that was submitted as part of the study in the submission, it actually opens my PDF document in, uh, in Adobe. And another nice feature is if I click on anything that has a hyperlink in it like this, I can actually follow that hyperlink to the document that it points to within the submission. So these are nice features because in your more traditional documental type document management systems, you could archive an ECTD, but you really couldn't do much with it. Once you brought it in, you couldn't navigate the backbone or the hyperlinks. And that, that's the way that those types of systems are constructed. They, they just don't maintain the same folder structures that you submit with your ECTD. So I used to work for many years in, um, in, in the documentum world. And, and whenever we discussed the topic of archiving submissions, I was always asked what the value add was since you couldn't actually do anything with the submission. And although there was still some value add in terms of records retention and records management, there really wasn't the value that we see here that you can actually do a certain amount of work. You can certainly navigate and view the documents in an ECTD sequence. A couple other things that we see here. Um, we have a submission planning calendar. And this is just an example of how we can work with other things as well as documents. So if I pull up my calendar, I see on the 14th of this month, I have planned to submit an IND, and on the 21st, an annual report. You can actually synchronize this with your Outlook calendar as well. So because again, because this is an all Microsoft platform, it's really nice the way that all of these things work together very seamlessly. And then I have some other things I can link in here. I have, for example, my, I could go to my user guides. I could have FAQs, search, uh, various types of reports, and all accessible from my, my main bar here. OK, so let's have a look into the regulatory document library. And what you see here, uh, we'll start to see in a moment how the EDM reference model is introduced into our submissions. But First at our top level, we see a number of, of drug products. 
represented. So here I have about eight products um, available that have been entered into the system. And if I start clicking on one of those product folders, I'll start to see my next level of organization for that product. And that's on the module level. So these are the CTD or ECTD modules that are submitted uh, for a, um, an, an application. And if I drill down a little bit further here into my module one, I'll see in this case it's actually broken up by region because your module one is entirely different in different regions. And if we look in European Union, we can see that we've created cover letters and product information in the European Union. If we go all the way down to the bottom, then we actually start to see some documents here. So if I look at these documents, um, I first of all, I can see, once I get to a folder that actually has documents in it, I see information about those documents. So I see their name, who, uh, who modified them, when they modifi were modified. I see what life cycle status they're in and their versions. And one great thing about SharePoint is, if you're familiar with out-of-the-box SharePoint, you still have all the capabilities here where you can sort and filter by these columns. So if I wanted to just see documents that were submission ready here, I can choose a filter and, and reduce down to those documents. If I wanted to, I can restore them now, clearing the filter, and I can also sort on that column. So those are very handy features when you're working uh, within the system. In addition, uh, you see a, a, a set of, of columns presented here, but we can provide additional views. So if you wanted to see something like um, what country this, these cover letters were submitted in, if you wanted to see the date they were finalized, um, things like that, we can add more columns. And we can do that either based on um, just understanding your requirements in general, but we can also open that up to users who can then create their own views with the information that's useful to them. And that's very easy to do. That You could probably do that with two minutes of training. So it's a very easy system to work with in general. Just to show you a little bit more of the folder structure before we move on, and I also want to point out at this point, if I want to see exactly where I am in the hierarchy, if I click on this folder, it's telling me that I'm in regulatory document management in the next stocks document library. There's my product, my module, my European Union, and my cover letters. So I always have this nice trail that I can navigate. And in fact, if I want to go back to my product and look at another module, I can just click on that and it will take me back up. If I click on module two summaries, I'll see, of course, a totally different folder structure within there. So now this is based on showing me that I have an introduction, a quality of raw summary, a non-clinical overview, and a clinical summary uh, created for this particular product. And if I keep drilling down, I, I have my, um, my quality of raw summary broken up into product and substance, but there are no substance documents, so I get down eventually to the product level. So let's go back up, and I, I'd like to show you how the, um, the document, the interaction with the documents work. So let me go back up. I'm going to find some of those Module 1 documents we saw before. So in my European Union, I had a cover letter that had reached the submission ready status. And I also have some that are draft. So if I go to my draft document, and drop down the menu next to it, I'll see a regular SharePoint menu pop up. And this has standard SharePoint items on it, which I'll go over in just a moment. And it also has something called advanced control, which is what NextDocs adds in. Um, before we look at that in detail, though, I also want to point out that this is new in SharePoint 2010, but we have this nice ribbon where you don't have to drop down the menu to do a lot of common activities. So I can, from the ribbon, I can edit the document, I can view and edit the properties, I can download a copy, and all of those nice things right from there. 